Hey everybody, Joshua here. Uh, I wanted to take this video to talk about first test prints and uh, the tool changer lock. Okay, so let's get started. All right, uh, first test prints are in and they look pretty darn good. Um, this is just a single tool, but I must say these are some of the best benches I've ever made. They're not perfect, there's a little bit of drool on the overhang over there, but um, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, and then finally, of course, uh, my first multicolor stuff is also in. Um, and, you know, this needs a little bit of work, but overall it's, it's not bad. Um, as far as the places that need work, it's mainly in kind of ooze control. So um, as my tools change and as one gets parked and the other ones get picked up, I just need a little bit better uh, routine to actually just do a little bit uh, more wiping before changing. Um, so apart from that, uh, though, this is a really, really good start. Um, I'm actually going to kind of pause my work on uh, doing development now, and I'm just going to do some documentation so I can hopefully get the, the 3D printer designs out uh, as soon as possible, I'd say in a couple weeks, uh, so that everyone else can actually start playing around with this. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the tool changer lock. Okay. Um, oh, and spoiler alert, all these parts were actually printed on the new printer, which is really cool. So it's now making its own parts. <laughs> okay. So um, this is the locking mechanism for the new tool changer. Um, this is an all mechanical solution that is intended to lock down tools with a consistent amount of torque. So let me talk about how this works. Okay, first off, this is just, this is the part that sits stationary on the machine. So this is kind of parked in the back of the machine, kind of positioned like this. And one thing that I'll mention is that there are actually two control cables that are not here currently that would go here and here. So if you tug here, you'll actually lock the tool, and if you tug here, you will unlock the tool. Okay, so spinning over. Okay, so the way this works is that there is there are two limit switches. There's one here that is for kind of unlocking, and then there's one inside of this pulley, and that's for detecting when you've locked. The way this works is that, uh, let's, so let's start in the unlock position, start here. As I rotate um, in this direction, what happens is that um, the pulley is, well actually these two pulleys are actually uh, free to rotate slightly relative to each other. So I can actually wiggle this. Um, the reason that's important is because uh, the bottom one is free floating and that's actually what's going to detect the lock tool. So the way this works is as I rotate in this direction, eventually at some point the cable that's attached to the bottom pulley is actually going to lock. And that's, it's going to just, it's going to, it's, uh, it's, that's from the tool side. Um, the reason uh, that's happening is because the, the tool is now stuck. Um, so as we continue to turn, what's going to happen instead is that the gap here is going to close and the spring is going to stretch. And eventually you'll hear that click. And what's happening is in the inside, I've tripped the limit switch. So what's really awesome about that is that I can lock any tool plate with a consistent amount of torque because I'm just stretching, uh, stretching the spring in F equals KX and I've just set the correct spring length. Um, so yeah, so that is what makes this really, really reliable is that I'm just relying on uh, extension of a spring and that gives me uh, a constant torque. It turns out that this kind of principle is also used in things like torque wrenches when you're trying to measure uh, on a little dial how much torque you, when you uh, screw in a screw. So this is not an unusual thing to do. Uh, yeah, um, but it, I must say I've done a couple thousand uh, tool changes and it works pretty darn well. It's also very, very fast, so I can lock in about a half second. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, a couple things I'll mention. The last video, I was not using a planetary stepper. I am in this video mainly because of cooling. Um, this has about the same amount of torque as the previous one I was using, but since it's geared down, it runs at about one amp and it doesn't get as hot. Um, and one of the things I noticed is that if you're running this for, let's say, six hours straight, the um, it'll actually start to warp the parts if um, on the previous version. So this problem, or this this current version doesn't have that problem. Um, so yeah, that is the main reason I'm using the planetary stepper. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, stay tuned, and I will get the CAD files out for the whole 3D printer platform in about a couple of weeks, I think I mentioned that already. Um, that said, you can actually already download this, just the tool changer locking mechanism and the tool, um, the carriage. Uh, you can already download that right now if you want to actually start playing around with putting one of these on your own platform. 
Uh, and then finally, the config files are also up too. So I'll put links for that in the bottom of the video. But yeah, thanks for tuning in and um, check in next time and I'll have some more stuff to talk about. All right, cheers.